Hello and welcome to our uh, workshop or strategy session on how to design an inspiring and sustainable daily creative practice. I am Suiko McCall. I'm a painter and I'm the founder and abbess of the Art Monastery. So the Art Monastery is a nonprofit arts organization that seeks to cultivate personal awakening and cultural transformation through art making, spiritual practice, and reciprocal connection with the earth. So I am a big believer in creativity as something that is so deep within us, something that connects us to a kind of ancestry that goes so far back, that goes free language, right? This is like pigment handprint on the wall, singing and drumming around the fire. This is like our creative expression is so deeply part of us that the idea that any one of us is not creative or not an artist is to me, it's a departure from something so, so totally integral to who we are. And as a creative person, I have identified as an artist since I was a little kid. And still I would have these moments of, I would hear from people who said like, oh, if I didn't paint every day, I just, I just don't know what I would do. I just wouldn't be, I would go nuts, you know? And I would be so jealous when I heard people say that because I haven't been that way, you know? Even though drawing and painting is so deeply nourishing to my heart and soul, I still could go weeks or months or even years without picking up a paintbrush or, or doing anything that I would have defined as art making or creativity. So to me, developing a daily or very regular creative practice has been a like long road <laughs> that it was not natural to me. It has been very challenging. And over the years of kind of aiming myself in this direction again and again, I um, have eventually found these ways that are super supportive to me. And I hope that they're supportive to you too. So, I, I also just want to say I'm just recovering from a cold. So if I sound a little funny, that could be why. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I'm healthy. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, before I go any further, also, I'd like to mention that I am zooming in from the uh, Berkeley, California. I'm actually on a houseboat in the Berkeley Marina, which is uh, the native homeland of the Ohlone people. So this workshop, um, the idea is to guide you toward clarity on what your a, a really achievable and satisfying daily creative practice could be for you. And one of the things that I came to in my journey is that it's very helpful to me to think of a daily practice within a container of time. So I'm a big fan of doing 100 days, but it could also be 30 days or seven days. Or, But for me, having a set number of days that you're going to do this practice, that for me, has there's something about that limitation that like it kind of contains the energy and I, it prevents me from looping out into like, I don't know if I can do this every day for the rest of my life, you know, <laughs> it like keeps it kind of it, more closer to the present. And so I know some of you have already signed up for the 100 day Art Monk Challenge, and that is kind of where I'll be talking toward, but you don't have to sign up for the challenge in order to be part of this workshop. So you can be, but I recommend that you think of an amount of time that um, would be supportive to you as you think about this daily practice that you can always renew at the end. So, um, let's see where to begin. So I'm going to take us through some exercises 
and I'll send you all the recording afterward. And I know there's a bunch of people who wanted to attend, but weren't available. So greetings to those of you who are watching the recording. Um, so I'll take you through it. And, and if you're participating live and you're not quite done with the exercise, when I move on to the next one, you can kind of leave it where it is and move along with me. And then you can always come back. Um, and when you're watching the recording, you could, of course, pause until you're done with that section and then um, on to the next. But with this, with these exercises that I'm leading, same for your whole 100 days or however long you might be engaging with this practice, it won't be perfect. And it will contain surprises. So just knowing that you can really, this is a way to really counteract our perfectionism and the idea that we're going to, um, that we know what's going to happen in this journey. So, um, oh, one other kind of logistical detail is that if you would like the recording and you haven't been in contact with me by email, please um, either send me a private message here with your email address or email me afterwards so that I can send you the recording. Okay, so creativity every day. This is life affirming. That's my experience. The creativity is fundamental to who we are, that it's natural, it's innate to you, and it will emerge if it's invited and welcomed. So this is one of the great profound powers of an everyday creative practice is that we open the door, that we say to this mysterious source of creativity, I, I'm here, I'm, I'm creating this space for you. So just that in itself is extremely powerful. And the best daily goal is one that captivates you. So it's a challenge, but it's not too challenging. And I really encourage you to let your definition of creativity or your definition of art making to be vast. That it's so much more than painting or writing or music or dance. That it can be time in nature, that it can be talking to strangers, that it can be the post-it notes that you leave for yourself. Really, really let it be, be wide. I, um, I introduced myself as a painter, but I also, consider myself a social sculptor. And social sculpture, the way I see it, is the practice of life as art. So you can let your creativity infuse, it could be how you dress every day. It could be how you shovel your sidewalk. <laughs> so, so let it be vast. And the other thing I wanna say right at the beginning is that you do not need to make a discrete piece each day for a hundred days. The first time I did a hundred day challenge, I did it, I, I kind of stumbled into the idea on my own. I was, I had been making paintings, these small 10 by 10 inch paintings where I, I painted a color, a circle of color. And then I was drawing concentric circles onto that color. And I did it one day and afterwards just felt like, wow, that felt so good. And so the next day I sat down and I thought, and there was almost a sense of like, kind of naughtiness. Like, I'm just, I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> and so I painted a new background and then I did the concentric circles. And afterwards I was just like, oh, wow. It was just, it just felt, really nourishing to me, whatever what was going on with for me at that time, this thing that I was doing just felt so good. So then the third, I did it a third day. And then on the fourth day, I thought, what if I kept doing that? What if I did this every day for a hundred days? <laughs> and I, so I decided to do it. And I did it for myself. I didn't invite anyone else into it. And I posted 
online. That was my like way of creating accountability for myself was that I would post every day on Instagram, my little, either a video of me painting or an actual shot of the painting. And so it was one discrete piece each day. So that is one way to do the challenge. And I think that's often kind of the first thing we think of, but it does not need to be that. So the second time I did a hundred day challenge, I did, it actually wasn't a hundred days, it was 56 days. And it was, um, my partner and I wanted to study these Lojong slogans, which are these Buddhist teachings. There's a kind of pithy statement, but inside that pithy statement is a wealth of teachings. And so I was gonna make a painting about each one of these Lojong slogans, and he was gonna make a poem and we were gonna do it together. And it totally didn't work. It completely fell apart for me. I, it was too much. There was so much in each slogan that I couldn't manage to make a whole painting about this like <laughs> wealth of teachings every single day. And because I was really clear on that that's what I was wanted to do and that the previous time I had done it, it had really worked. I, I didn't let myself adjust my daily goal and I fell off and I didn't finish it. So that in itself, I share that story because that is also a very useful piece of information. Like what I learned from that is continually reflecting on how it's going and what the practice is and letting yourself adjust it as you go is extremely helpful. So the third time I did a hundred day challenge, I decided to work on, I've been, it's been a long time dream of mine to develop a tarot deck. Mm. And so I was very clear with myself. I did not want to try to design one card so that time, my daily goal was, I'm going to spend 15 minutes a day developing the deck, whatever that means. That worked really well. And in the end, I did actually get through the, I made a, at least a rough drawing of every card in the deck. So I, I just wanted to offer you those three different models um, where you could make a discrete thing each day. You could be working on something for an amount of time per day. And that thing could be kind of a, a, a kind of linear project like a tarot deck or publishing a book or, you know, something that is kind of a discrete, a larger discrete project. Or it could be, I'm going to spend 10 minutes a day moving my body in a way that's expressive. You know, it might not result in a final project. It might not result in something that you can share with other people. That's fine. It's not really about what you end up with at the end, in my, in my opinion. Okay, so other things to consider as we think into, we feel into what we might wanna identify as our daily goals. Maybe you want to learn something new. Maybe you want to study wedding cake design or learn Photoshop or immerse yourself in drumming. Mm. So you, maybe you want to learn something new. Maybe you want to get better at something. Maybe you already are, you really enjoy drawing. But you really wish that you could draw faces more realistically. You could hone your skill at realistic drawing, or you could hone your skill. There was someone in a previous challenge who was in a band and her bandmates were complaining about her sense of rhythm. And so her hundred day challenge was every day she sang the same song, the same song with a metronome. Mm. And it was a really powerful mm. experience for her. I could tell more about that story, but that was totally the right project for her. Another way to approach it is something that's fun. You could put a fake mustache on a random object every day for 100 days. <laughs> Think about how life affirming that would be. <laughs> and you really would need to activate your creativity to get that one done. You could sing in the shower every day for 100 days. You could dance in the kitchen every day for 100 days. 
Okay, so something fun. Another way, another angle is nourishment. What would be nourishing to you? Drawing concentric circles for me was deeply nourishing in a way that I can't explain. Maybe scribbling. Scribbling can be huge. An idea came out of the last challenge that someone said throwing things. <laughs> yeah, throwing things every day. That could be quite powerful. You can make earth altars every day. I, and I already mentioned the idea of a more linear project that could be creating a tarot deck, writing a book, launching a website. Another angle is connecting with yourself in some way. So journaling, authentic movement, spontaneous sounding. And yet another angle that can be interesting to explore is something that would connect you with others. You could uh, write letters physical letters in the U.S. mail. Whoa, that would be amazing. You could make cards. You could make cards and write letters, not necessarily one per day. You could talk to a stranger every day. Hmm. So I just wanted to offer these kind of different lenses to get your minds thinking. And now we will leap into the actual um, exercises and the process I'm going to take you through is heavily inspired by Rich Armstrong's book, The Perfect 100 Day Project. <laughs> That's a book you could find at your local bookstore or your library if you want to go deeper into any of these. Here's the different phases that we're going to go through. We're going to do a brainstorm where we come up with like, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and you're going to write down just phrases and short words, like different whatever's popping for you. Then we're going to get clear on why. And then we're going to talk about both constraints and parameters. Constraints being like kind of external restrictions and parameters being restrictions that you choose. And then finally, at the end, I'll offer you some questions that you can ask yourself around actually choosing. So that's going to be our flow. So there's going to be, I, and I tell you that ahead of time so that you know, there's, it's like we're going to start by opening it up and going kind of wild with our thinking. And then we will come to a like narrowing what actually fits in your actual life that's based in reality. So I tell you that so that you know you can really let yourself free with your brainstorm. And then we'll come back to the kind of narrowing and editing down and grounding down into reality. So let's begin by brainstorming. So you're going to start with jotting down what are you currently doing? Sometimes it just starting with what's actually here in your life already can help us to open up to something that's right under our noses. So what are you currently doing at work, at home, in your personal life? What are you currently doing that gives you energy? What do you currently do that you enjoy? What are you currently doing? Okay, you can stay with that one, or you can move to what do you want to get done? Sometimes something practical can be a really good container for a challenge. Like maybe you're preparing for a show or building a website. Mm -hmm. What do you want to get done?
Okay, and you can stay with what do you want to get done? Or you could shift to what do you want more of in your life? And try to be honest here. You don't have to share your responses with anyone. So what experiences do you really want? More time to relax, more adventure, more music. What do you want more of in your life? What do you want more of? And stay with that, what you want more of, or you could move on to what are you good at? What are you already good at? So this could be part of your career, it could be a hobby, it could be a personal thing. Maybe something you've plateaued on, or something you've from. Maybe you used to love calligraphy, you used to bake all the time. You're good at 3D rendering, but there's no reason to do it anymore. You can stay with what you're good at, if that's flowing, or you could shift to what are your big dreams and goals? What do you long to do? Or what do you want to be good at? Where do you want to be? Even if it feels crazy, even if it feels totally impossible right now. So really go big with this one. I want to build a cabin. I want to become the head of animation at Pixar. <laughs> I want to draw with photorealistic with pencil. Go big. Big dreams and goals. Okay, so you can stay with your big dreams and goals. Or you could move on to what do you want to know more about? What do you want to learn? What are you curious about? Could be work related, it could be hobby related, it could be totally geeky. I always wanted to understand drone cinematography. <laughs> I want to learn how to channel spirits. I want to learn Wim Hof breathing techniques. I do want to know more about. You can stay with what you want to learn about, or you can shift to love. So let yourself go really wide here, because this section can eventually be combined with others. But like if you love bunnies and you also want to learn 3D rendering, you could spend 100 days rendering bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> 
3D bunnies. <laughs> so, you know, really it could be, I love trying new restaurants. I love snorkeling. I love graphic novels. What do you love? What do you love? Okay, so you can stay with what you love or you could shift to what you struggle with. So what's something you wanna get better at? Sometimes it's easier to identify as what's something that frustrates you? Something you wish you could change? Or even something you're scared of? So it could be you struggle with comparing yourself to others. Struggle with perfectionism. Or I wish I were better at staying in touch with my friends. What are frustrations or things that you'd like to change? You can stay with your frustrations or things you're afraid of. But shift to what are your strong feelings and what are they about? So this could lead to a challenge that addresses that feeling. So I'm really angry that wildfires are, are becoming normalized. Or I'm overwhelmed with social media or I feel a thirst to go on a silent retreat or I'm totally in love with my kitten. <laughs> what are your strong feelings? What do you have strong feelings about? So you can stay with the strong feelings. Or you can move on to, we just have a couple more questions. And these next two are kind of do <laughs> They're classic power questions. So here, here it comes. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? If you were guaranteed success, what would you do? Whatever comes. Short phrases, words. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? What would you do if you knew you could not fail? So you can stay with that one, or you could try this other one, which is, what would you do if you weren't afraid? What would you do if you were not afraid? Again, you can go wide. 
What would you do if you were not afraid? Okay, and then finally, last moment, just anything else you want to add? Anything else coming up? Just a moment to write down anything else. Okay, so that's our brainstorm for now. Now we're going to move into this phase of mixing and matching. So you're going to look back over your list of all these words and phrases, and you're going to pull out various options and like remix them by combining them in different ways. So you can make some that are normal and some that are outrageous. <laughs> You can get wild and ridiculous and definitely have fun because again, we'll, we will get practical, but that will be later. And you can do multiple variations on a theme. So it can help your brain if you push beyond things that you think you'll actually do. And then you can notice as you're doing that when and if your energy goes up. So we're going to use, uh, you're going to fill in the, the blank. You can start composing this. What if I blank for 100 days? What if I did 3D rendering of bunnies every day for 100 days? What if I did open water synchronized swimming for a hundred days? What if I read a poem and then made a painting in response for a hundred days? If you get stuck at all, you can read through your list and just notice which ones that your energy spikes on, if your energy goes up. And then take that one and do a bunch of different variations on it. And again, don't worry, we're gonna get practical later. So have fun, play around, you're playing.
So see if you can come up with a few more. And don't worry, we're going to narrow down also later. So if you feel like I have so many ideas, there's too many things I want to do. We'll, we'll, we'll loop around to choosing and how to narrow down. Okay, so when you're ready, take a look to review this list of your what ifs. These of the mixes and the matches. And notice what is standing out, captivating you in some way. And which ones are, oh my gosh, I actually want to do that. So you can highlight or underline, basically narrow it down to one or two or three. And this doesn't necessarily need to be your your final daily goal, but it's the one that we'll just continue to work with. So our next thing is we're going to pick one and we're going to make a, a mind map about why. So it's important to to know your reason for doing this practice. Um, because if you can clarify to your conscious mind what this deep down pull is, that can sustain you over the 100 days. You know, once the excitement fades or once life starts to creep in and the, you know, days get busy and this knowing your reason why can help stick with it in a genuine, authentic way. So pick one and write it in the middle or take a fresh page of, on your notebook and write it, uh, you know, just a couple words so you understand what you're talking about and put a circle around it like so. So you put your idea in the center, draw a circle around it. And then you ask yourself, you look at that and you say, why do I wanna do it? And just the first thing that pops into your head, you write that down, why do I wanna do it? And so you write that down in a little bubble, it's like coming off of that central bubble. Okay, so the first thing that came into your mind, I wanna make a tarot deck, why? I've always wanted to. Okay, so now you ask yourself again, why have you always wanted to? Why do you wanna do that? Why is that important? Why? Um, I always wanted to because I want to get in touch with my intuition. So that bubble comes off of that one. And you keep asking why until you get to like, just because. <laughs> At that point, you go back to your center. You go back to the center one. Say, okay. And you ask yourself again, why do I want to do it? Why is it important? Why? So we're trying to get beyond, I want to do it because it's good for my career, or I want to do it because it's good for me. 
or because I want to help people or because I like it. Just keep asking why. Why does the idea of doing this every day light you up? Why exactly? You just keep asking, keep letting whatever arises come up, write it down and ask again why. We're kind of drilling into a reason that's authentic. If you feel like you finished one mind map and you want to go to another one of your ideas and do the why mind map for that one, you can do that. Let's give this another minute though. Why do you want to do it? Why is it important? Why does it matter to you? Why really? This is also a, a process that coming back tomorrow may help. So if, if it isn't becoming really clear to you don't worry. Or if you feel like answers aren't coming, you can keep at it or you can stop now and return to it. Or, you know, answers may pop later today. Okay, so let's move on from this. I know some of you need to leave at the top of the hour. So um, we'll leave the mind mapping for now and you can come back to it. So there's, uh, a couple other pieces I want to talk about. So constraints and parameters. So I mentioned these previously that constraints are the kind of, sometimes I think about, about it as like the structure of your actual life, you know, the limitations on your time and your money and your equipment and your responsibilities is kind of reality thing. And parameters are similar kinds of constraints, but they're ones that you choose. So we're gonna start with constraints. And we're gonna look at how these ideas, this wild list of ideas fit into your actual life. So this is the place where people often get stuck because we look at lists and then we say, no, see, I don't have time to do this. I have a job, I have kids, I have responsibilities, you know, and I think that deep down constraints are not a good excuse for not doing something that will bring you alive, something that will nourish your soul and will actually feed and enliven all of the other areas of your life. And the key is to actually look at the constraints to be grounded in reality and to say, okay, this is what's so about my life. I do not actually have a lot of time. <laughs> and so great, if we look at them, if we don't acknowledge them, if we pretend they aren't there, we just say, no, I really wanna do this thing. I'm gonna spend an hour a day doing this thing. What happens is we get disappointed and frustrated and disillusioned and stressed out and we give up. And it's totally understandable because it's like it didn't fit into our lives. But if we really work within the constraints that are real to your life, then we learn the value of bit by bit, inch by inch, step by step. You know, we can we learn how much we can accomplish with very little. And we start to focus on what's actually important. And then we really build our confidence and it's empowering. So constraint actually breeds creativity. So how do we adapt our big ideas to fit into this life? So the first thing is 
to consider and jot down what are your constraints? So this is time, money, and this work actually works well if you choose a particular, maybe the one that you were just mind mapping. Keep that in mind and like, what are your constraints about that? What kind of equipment would you need? What kind of money, what kind of skill? What, is, what are the, the kind of, when you really think about reality, the practical way, what are the constraints around that? Do you have the knowledge you need to start? Do you have everything you need to start? Do you need a different space? And once you have those constraints, the kind of the reality of your life, like think about yourself when you get busy, or when you're traveling. And then consider how might these constraints shift the daily goal. So given your reality, how can you accommodate this goal into your reality? I'll give some examples. I'm in the process of moving. I don't have a studio right now. So my daily goal right now needs to be something I can do at a, at a desk, at a table, in a sketchbook, on a small piece of paper, if I'm gonna do visual stuff. I once wrote a novel in 30 days, entirely on my laptop, on my commute to work. I had a 38 minute train ride to and fro work. I worked some on the weekends too, but I basically did it on my computer. So another example would be, you wanna make a Hollywood blockbuster feature length film, but you have no gear, no actors, no budget, <laughs> but you do have an iPhone and a lunch break, right? So. It's like a, it's a game. It's like, how can you take the tiny step toward the giant dream within the life that you have right now? Start before you're ready. Don't wait for the situation to be perfect. It will never be perfect. Start now, figure out how to make it work. How can you do something? At the top of the hour. So if you need to go, thank you for being here. And I will send out the recording as soon as I can. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll edit out the section where I was trying to get the, the thing to go. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. <laughs> okay, for those of you who can stay on, we'll continue. Um, on to parameters. So parameters are constraints that you choose. So this can enhance and clarify your project and it can make it really kind of fun or it can give it a kind of an edge that makes it come alive. So my favorite example of parameters are that Dr. Seuss, forgot who it was, his editor or someone he was working with, basically challenged him to write a children's book that kids couldn't put down with um, 250 words from a list of 500. And he gave him a list of 500 words. And Dr. Seuss on that challenge wrote The Cat in the Hat. And then that same person said, okay, write a children's book that the kids can't put down with 50 words. And he wrote Green Eggs and Ham. So this is a great example. And great, isn't it amazing? Green Eggs and Ham has 50 words in it total. 
And so this is a beautiful thing to do. It's like limiting the palette. So like the best paintings I've ever made are with when I said, I'm going to use these three colors and that is it. How many colors can I get out of those three, mixing those three colors, right? So examples of parameters, maybe my favorite parameter is duration. That you set a minimum and or maximum amount of time that you're going to spend each day. I strongly recommend that when in doubt, give yourself less time each day. In fact, I strongly recommend that you give yourself 20 minutes or less. You can get an incredible amount done in 10 minutes. It's amazing. So duration is a parameter that you could play with. Another parameter is what, like the content of what you're doing. So one example for me was concentric circles. I'm doing concentric circles every day. You could do, I'm gonna do a photographic portrait every day. Another parameter would be how you're gonna do that. I'm gonna draw with my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna draw in response to whatever's on the radio or whatever Spotify serves up, right? You can choose, you can make the process be the parameter. And another piece that I strongly recommend that you consider and this doesn't necessarily need to be um, something that's fixed or like actually part of your goal, but to consider when and where you will do this daily practice. There's a lot of research on this, that when you identify when and where you're going to do it, do any action, the likelihood that you'll do it kind of skyrockets. It's like time six or something like that. So. I'm going to do this after breakfast at the kitchen table. I'm going to do this on my lunch break in the nearby park. I'm going to do this on the couch while listening to music after dinner, after I do the dishes. <laughs> Get it? So identify when and where. It's amazing how much it helps. So decisions are shockingly expensive energetically any kind of decisions so there's all this neurological uh, research about our brains and we basically have a kind of fixed amount of energy for decision making each day it gets refreshed while we're sleeping so we wake up in the morning we've got a full tank and with every decision we make it gets lower and lower and lower so one of the things that can be incredibly helpful for keeping your practice going is to minimize the number of decisions that you need to make even teeny tiny ones. So that's why deciding when and where you're gonna do your practice helps, but also identifying what it is that you're gonna do. So now some people have written to me and said, but what if I wanna do a different thing every time? Or, and you know, people in past challenges have also said like, I can't just pick one thing, I'll go nuts, I need to, have an, so there's there's other ways, there's ways of navigating that. One option is, um, I call it park on the downhill slope. At the end of today's daily practice, you do your creative practice. And then when you finish, you identify what you're gonna do tomorrow. That's a way that can help if you are if you like to keep it fresh and you want to be able to change your mind. But basically you decide the day before. Or you can have a list, something someone did in a previous challenge was she had a list of seven different medium media that she wanted to work with. And so she had the list, she had all those materials, and then each day she could sit down and say, okay, yeah, today is watercolor. Because it was already right there. So you could, you know, definitely, this is part of your constraints actually is understanding who you are as a person 
And if doing it every day after breakfast or choosing a time, if you think, if you start to like feel itchy, when you, like, you're the kind of person who needs, like maybe your schedule just isn't regular and it's kind of unfolding, then same thing. I would say you could either decide week by week. You could say this week, it actually does work. I can get up and do it at this time every day. Or maybe you decide the day before, you look at tomorrow's schedule and you say, oh, actually tomorrow I'm gonna to do it at lunchtime. And then at the end of that session, you can look at the next day and say, oh, tomorrow I'll do it in the evening, you know? But so that you know before that day, so you're not using up one of your valuable decision-making tanks, <laughs> credits, credits from your tank. <laughs> There's a mixed metaphor for it. <laughs> okay. So, um finally let's come to oh actually there's another piece about parameters um just to point out you may have noticed that there are constant and variable parameters so constant being fixed ones that stay the same each time and variable ones being the ones that change every time so you could say for example um making a photography project portrait every day, that's constant. It's always gonna be a, a, a photography portrait. But who I photograph each day will change. That's the variable. Or I'm gonna confront my perfectionism by drawing a word every day with my non-dominant hand. That's the constant. And then what word I, I write every day is the variable. And I encourage you, if you have a variable, that you find a way of, that you know your process for choosing, for identifying the variable. Meaning, if I'm drawing a different word every day, that I find a website that has a random word generator on it. And I bookmark that URL and I know where to go and I'll press the button and it'll give me my random word, you know? Or you could do that for writing poetry. Or you could use an Oracle deck. You could use a Tarot, you could use the I Ching, you could use Dice. You know, you can use these kind of random number generators, things like that that can, in order to, if you wanna introduce some unpredictability and spontaneity or something that's out of your control into your daily practice, find a way to identify that so that you know how you're going to do it and you're not making that decision every day. There's an amazing artist whose name I'm not remembering who made, he took a deck of playing cards and then he identified all these kind of rules on the playing cards about like what color he was going to use and what size the paper would be and um he made a whole deck and then he would use the deck to he would pull three cards from the deck and that would determine what he was making and he made these beautiful huge grids that were maps and anyway really cool process but basically we're trying to minimize the uh, amount of decisions you need to make Okay, so now the final phase, which is choosing. So what we'll do now is look back over everything you've written and notice what is calling you the most. So likely you're gonna to wanna to go back and forth and try on different variables, but pick one that you think this could be the one, this could be the daily practice. And, or no, don't pick one. You're looking at the list. You're looking at the ones that you've decided could be these, any of these could work. Okay, and as you look over them, I'm gonna ask these questions and you can notice which ones light up for you. Which one is most meaningful to you? Which one would you regret not doing? Okay, here's a little bit doozy of a question. If you only had three years to live, which one would you choose? Looking at this list, 
which one helps you grow the most? puts you in contact with what's most important to you in this time and season of your life. And then a uh, final one, a little check. You can check yourself. Do you want to do this? because it sounds good or noble or cool? Or do you want to do it because you actually really want to do it? Okay, so those are the questions and my pointers for you. Um, try to choose one that's a little bit edgy, but not overwhelming. And, and also let it be a humble daily goal in service of a big vision. I think that's a that's a a place it's been helpful to me to say I the, the doing a hundred days is big. That is big. So the daily practice doesn't need to be big. It's a hundred days, it's big. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Comments, concerns. Uh, feedback, one struggling. You can unmute and ask, or you could put it in the chat. Or if there's no questions, we can say goodbye. <laughs> I see there's a bunch of people here who have done 100 day challenges in the past. So if any of you have anything that you're like, oh gosh, I wish I'd known this before I started, that could be a beautiful thing to share for the people who are brand new here. Yeah, Michael Ann. Unmute. So I think the power of just a very small goal. So I did a hundred year, a hundred day challenge and I, it was way too ambitious the first time. I think I wanted to walk, meditate 10 minutes, do art for 30 minutes. Um, and it, I just, I, it all sort of fell apart and I, and I'm now working, I have summers off. So the second one, I picked five minutes. Um, yeah. And I wanted to explore art, so I picked um, five or six mediums, and that was my watercolor week, my drawing week. Um, and I just sat down for five minutes, and I can't, I mean, I have a huge, you know, sketchbook full of art. Um, and, you know, sometimes, uh, I'm, um, Suiko said, have it be scalable. So sometimes I felt like I could stay longer, and it'd be 10 minutes or 20 minutes or maybe even an hour. Um, but I always did five minutes. And when I really felt resistance, I just timed it and did five minutes and stopped. Nice. Thank you so much. That's right. Scalability is great. If you do one, yeah, where the you identify the minimum, but then if you want to spend an hour, if you have an hour, you can. That's That can be really rich. Yeah, Pauline, did you want to share? Yeah, I, I loved my, I did it for the first time, uh, it just ended. And um, for me, what happened was I unlocked the, the artists that I've been 
trying to unblock for many, many, many years, maybe 50 years. And I loved it. I did make it very small, 10 minutes a day. Um, but what came through to me this time around was one of the problems I had um, was I um, spent a lot of my energy credits with trying to decide what to draw. I was doing line contour drawing. And so what you're saying today, Suiko, in terms of really kind of uh, taking care of that before you start was re is really important. So um, I loved it and I got through it and I uh, got so much out of it. So I'm back again. All right. <laughs> so great. Welcome back. <laughs> great that's so great oh yeah and bill wrote in the chat i started one last may and it's still going i was so lucky to be in a sangha pod that allowed our shared experience to evolve and become now it's wonderful but it's a little like what we but it's little like what we started thinking it would be yeah that's right the sense of surprise is real yeah so if you um, join the challenge, then you'll have the opportunity to join an Art Monk Sangha pod, which is a group that you'd be in contact with. I'm going to group you by time zone and by um, desire for frequency of contact, meaning if I'm going to try to put people together who want to be in touch every day, like a total accountability group, and then other maybe you just want to be in contact once a week or even less so I'm going to try to group people by that by um, frequency of contact and then we're also trying something new this year which is having you could have an additional optional affinity group so you could be in a group of writers or a group of painters or a group of dancers or whatever your chosen medium is if that's fun for you Great. Anything else? Yeah, go on, please. Yeah. Um I I didn't make it to the planning session of the previous challenge, which I was in. And I'm really glad I was here because I kind of needed a like I was writing poems to the last one and I had a notebook with a hundred pages and I haven't quite I think I have three or four pages left. And the challenge ended officially January 1st. So I'm kind of like, I just wanted to put this out there. I'm kind of struggling with, I've discovered sort of a new relationship to myself and to the practice and like dancing with the resistance of like the days when I know I'm going to do it. And the days when I know my brain's like, no, I'm not doing that today. And, and wondering if I can continue to do it, excuse me, on my own. Um, mm -hmm. but also knowing like in the last two or three weeks since the challenge ended, I look at the pages in my notebook with the poems and I put a date on the bottom of each page. And I think I'm averaging about once a week now, uh, instead of once a day. <laughs> and I don't know, there's just, there's something about, you know, I'm working as an accountant, so it's tax season. So I'm telling myself, I don't really have time to to be involved in this and, and I know I have five minutes a day but it's more about I don't know I guess the attitude or the approach and mm -hmm. I know I guess I'm scared to be in it but I'm scared that if I'm not in it that I'm not going to have I guess it's the accountability thing right like yeah one of the things that ironically I often get hung up about is we had a meeting during the last hundred day challenge about being gentle with yourself Mm -hmm. and like okay you didn't do it today it doesn't mean you're not a you know you're not an artist you missed a day you know yeah and it harkens back to when I was a kid I was raised orthodox Jewish and mm -hmm. I've since left all that behind and I had a friend who was I forget what it's called it had something to do with different spirits and different islands and he was an mm -hmm. Orisha priest and he was supposed to make like 20 or 30 different offerings every day to each of the spirits that he was aligned with of like, you know, a fruit wow. for this one and water for this one and something green for this one. And, and we were just talking one day and he was like, you know, some days I miss it. Like he missed, he missed doing it. And it was like, when I was a kid being Jewish and religious, you're supposed to pray three times a day. And he said something very simple, which is, 
you missed it today. It doesn't mean you're not religious anymore. It doesn't mean you're not going to try and do it again tomorrow. You missed today. It's not, it's not horrible. So I, I understand that part of being gentle with myself, but sometimes I do it to a fault where it's like, oh, okay, you're not going to do it today. That's okay. And then the next day <laughs> it's okay. And at some point you kind of have to put back that, let's call it discipline for lack of a better word of like, mm -hmm. no, you know, that's, that's what the challenge is, is I don't feel like doing it today. Like Michael Ann said, when you feel the resistance, resistance to me has always been a great guide of where you should go. But yeah. when you feel the resistance, you go back to the mechanics of, that's why they call it a practice. You know, you have, I'm going to sit and I'm going to write for five minutes. And when the timer goes off, I'm going to stop. And that's all I have to do today. So yeah. I, I don't think I'm making a point anymore, but I just needed to get all that out there. So I hope <laughs> that is for something. Yes. Thank you. I think that was really valuable. Thank you for touching on all those points because they are so important. And, you know, you can also, your goal, if, you know, I mean, I hear you saying you're afraid to not do it. I, because I, I know it was, it was so meaningful for you last time. And I wonder if there is a way it could be, even, there was at one point in one of my challenges, I was so busy and kind of stressed out and I changed my daily goal to, I need to make a mark on paper every day i mean it really got down to like not even five minutes it was like a mark and often i would spend a whole five minutes but sometimes i literally would be like scribble okay oh, God. <laughs> you know? so that's another like you can really get into like a micro micro practice and yeah and there's a dance there's a nuance between like feeling into that relationship between self-discipline and self-forgiveness it's a really rich place to be curious and exploring ourselves yeah great anything else yeah pauline yeah i know when i was doing I, mine was uh, 10 minutes of blind contour drawing a day and um there were days when i um just had to do what would come, which might have been doodling, which might have been some words and some doodling and then some color. I mean, and, and it didn't get in the way of the practice because I really stayed with the blind contour drawing, but I think that helped, actually helped me to do it because it was the aspect of practice. It was the aspect of the yeah. continuity that I, I at least did something. And uh, instead of getting in the way, I think it did help. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what else I want to see? John Simon is here on the call. I just want to say he wrote this amazing book called Drawing Your Own Path, 33, hi, John, uh, practices at the crossroads of art and meditation. And one of the things he said in his book that I love is draw, just draw, like if you have to draw on the back of a receipt, draw on the back of a receipt. And that there's something about that line that it stayed with me so much. And I literally will be like drawing on the back of a receipt. Like you open your there's a seat in your pocket or somewhere. You know? So mm -hmm. thank you for that, John. And I highly recommend his book, everybody. Yeah, John. I, I just, I want to say one thing on this line that you're talking about, just being able to do whatever you can do every day. Uh, because that, like, if if it's if I can only make four marks on the page or two marks on the page, that's what the 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 way to uh, think about that is. Okay, it's a hundred day challenge, and when you read the record of that challenge, when you look back at all of the entries along that thing, that's the day that that happened. That that's the entry, so you can understand it in that in that whole story. You can see mm -hmm. the ups and downs and the path, and you can really read that. That's why it's so important to do a little bit every day, even if that's all you can do, because that's the day that was all you could do. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. It's the truth. It's it's like that's the truth of our lives, right? <laughs> yeah. Great. Pauline, sure. Yeah. yeah. One day I was on, uh, we were traveling, and it was a 16 hour day in the car 
and uh, I was in the passenger seat and I drew every aspect of the dashboard of the car because that's all I had was that day, <laughs> that subject. And uh, it, it just cracked me up to have that in my in my uh, little, little um, group of drawings. Not so little. Yeah, in. yeah absolutely. Thank but, you. Megan, did you have something? I do. Um... And I know we probably need to get off the call soon, but it just struck me as we're chatting that um, the the last time I did the 100 day challenge, um, I could go on about my experience, but I left it open for myself, which was good because I started out with very specific goals, but I said, you know, if I need to shift, that's fine. Um, my goal was to write. So that's what I did. <laughs> I shifted from writing essays to writing these short little poems. Um, but one thing I discovered in the process that was so helpful for me, um, and actually kind of reminded me of sewing my rakusu, um, mm. was that on the days where I felt a lot of resistance, where I felt like I didn't have time, um, I gave myself a 15 minute goal, which was doable, but sometimes, you know, I just had a lot of resistance. Um, and I've done the same thing with drawing, just making a few marks on a page at, at other points in my life. Um, it really helps me to approach it from a place of nourishment, like I would if I had my rakusu in my hands and just say, okay, maybe I can make four marks on the page, but can I just like settle into my breath and really make mm. those marks? Mm. And it's amazing that even if I could only stand writing for five minutes, if I took that practice with me, God, I, it made my whole day easier somehow, or like gave me like this little kernel of a sense of ease. I think just from like the being very present and also just simple showing up for myself, like brushing my teeth, like, you know, it's, I, if I, for, you know, skip brushing my teeth, which I don't do very often, but if I do, because I'm, you know, it's, I don't feel great about that. I, I would prefer to show up for myself. So taking it from that perspective of, but not from a sense of pressure, just of like, you know, I deserve this little, even if it's 60 seconds of nourishment mm -hmm. um, and just feeling that in my body was super helpful for me. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, you're reminding me that I, um, there was one period when I knew it was gonna be hard for me to get to my drawing practice. And so I started keeping, oh, it kind of alternated between a sketchbook and, and pencils next to my bed, or sometimes I put my iPad and my pen, my Apple pencil next to my bed. So I could wake up in the morning and kind of groggily, gr literally do my drawing before I got out of bed. Mm -hmm. Just a short one because, it, you know, before there's the chance for the rest of the day to get in the way. Okay, we are at time. Thank you so much for your patience about that. <laughs> Excuse me, that slideshow. I might figure out how I could send it out. <laughs> I worked so hard on it. But um, thank you so much for being here. I hope that was helpful for everyone. If you have not up for the 100 day challenge but you'd like to, if it sounds fun to be kind of in community and to, um, be part of this kind of movement and to get some encouragement along the way, then you can sign up. I'll put the link in the chat. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. And, and to everyone who shared, that was really juicy. I love hearing about the, um, the impact and the insights on people who have done the challenge before. So, all righty, thank you all so much. Have a great day. If you want to unmute and say goodbye in a big cacophony, and then I'll end the call. Thank, thank you, you so much. Goodbye. So good to thank see you. you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you.